mode. Welcome back, everyone, for our final Thursday session. The day has just sped by, hasn't it? And thanks for being with us today. I know that we're all enjoying the time with you. At your request, we are doing another coffee giveaway for this session. I should have known that it would be in high demand. I've been in conferences with you on site, and I've watched that coffee pot at every break just kind of dwindle and dwindle. So I should have known to do more than one coffee break for this. This time, we are going to be talking with Jason. He is going to be sharing about AW Pending. Jason serves as technician, but he's also the one that does all of the ACE web testing, and he's going to be very busy. He's busy, busy doing all testing all of the new goodies that Sign has put into ACE web for the month of June for our conference release. And Jason, with that, I'm going to turn some things over to you. And please remember, everyone, to drop those questions into the chat box. Jason is presenting, Stein is on as well, and they'll be able to answer those questions that you have. So, Jason, we are in your hands now. Awesome. Guessing you can see my screen? Yes, we can. Perfect. So, as Sharon said, we are going to be talking about AW pending payments today. They're kind of the redheaded stepchild of the... Uh, the payment world in ACE Web and Student Manager, um, often misunderstood, but hopefully by the end of this session, you're going to have some uh, knowledge on how it works and why it happens and what you can do to prevent it or reduce it. So we'll take a quick look at our agenda for today. First, we're going to kind of do a deep dive on the actual ACE Web credit card payment process. We'll go step by step on what's happening uh, through each of those different phases. And then we'll talk about how the actual AW, AW pending payments are created and why they're created. We're going to look at some of the causes for those AW pending payments to stick around. Then we're going to look at the ACEWEB INI setting void pending payments, which kind of controls how ACEWEB does some cleanup on that. And then after that, we're going to look at how you can find AW pending payments and what to do if you can't find AW pending payments. And finally, we're going to talk about some ways that you can reduce and possibly even eliminate altogether the AW pending payments. So let's jump right in. The ACE web payment process. When a student is on your ACE website and they've got all their courses on their cart and they are ready to pay, they click that payment service button. It may be labeled differently on your template depending on what template you have. Uh, but, but basically on the enrollment cart, when they click that button to go to the payment service, right at that time, ACEWEB is going to create a registration record and it's going to attach a payment record to that with AW pending entered into the registration note and the pay note fields. Now, there's a couple of reasons for this. For one, you can't have a payment record without a registration record. And two, this is just sort of the way it has to be because in a perfect world, if everything could be authorized immediately or if uh, ACEWEB was able to do the authorization for all credit cards itself, then we wouldn't have to worry about this sort of interim temporary uh, place for the registration and authorization data to sit. Um, so once they click that button, it creates those two records, the registration and the payment record, puts AW pending in those fields. And then at that point, control is switched to the payment gateway. So it's out of ACEWEB's hands at that point. Um, it's just left in a listening mode. So it's waiting for a response from your payment gateway. Now, a response can be a number of things. It doesn't necessarily mean a good authorization or a successful authorization of the credit card. A response can be anything from a failed payment. So if the user clicks the cancel button on your payment gateway, um, if there is an error that occurs, if the card is declined, those are all examples of actual responses. When a response is received, then it's no longer an AW pending payment. ACEWEB is going to remove that AW pending note and it's going to finalize that transaction with either the successful authorization information or it's going to put in the reason that it failed, whether it was canceled or declined or whatever. So the key here is when ACEWEB does not hear a response, that's when you get stuck with the AW pending payment in your system. And just to reiterate, 
once they leave the ACE website, as soon as they click that payment gateway button, there's really nothing else that we can do at that point until we hear back from the payment gateway. So let's look at some of the examples of how these pending payments uh, end up sticking around. So if the user goes to the payment gateway site and then they just like, close their browser or the infamous hit the back button, these are examples of where they went to the gateway site but didn't actually put in their credit card information, attempt to authorize it, anything like that. Now, as I said, if they click the cancel button, and not all payment gateways have this on by default, so this is one of those things you definitely want to check with your uh, payment gateway rep. If you don't have a cancel button on your payment gateway site, you need to make sure if it's available that you get that added because that, again, is a response. It's a way out for those cases where someone clicks the payment service button and then they're like, oops, I didn't mean to go this far yet. I just wanted to see the total or something like that. When that happens and you don't have a cancel button, they have two options. They can hit their back button, which is going to break the whole thing altogether, or they can just close their browser, which is also going to leave that AW pending payment. Another cause is if they click the button to leave AceWeb and the, the payment gateway site is down, so it's just timing out, or there's something wrong with the bridge between their ISP and the gateway site. In those instances, and these should be honestly pretty rare, um, that's still going to create that AWA pending payment because ASWEB has no way to receive a response or a cancel or anything like that. Now, this is another scenario that is also pretty rare if the a student goes to the gateway site, they put in their card information, and then they authorize it, but something happens before that information can re return to ACEWeb, then again, it's going to just leave that as an AW pending registration and payment. Um, one of the common examples of this, I guess, would be if your gateway has a um, kind of a return link so that they authorize the credit card and it says success, you know, your card was charged. But then there's a little button at the very bottom of the page that says click here to return to your merchant or click here to return to ACEWeb. If they don't click that button, then that means the posting information is never being sent back to ACEWeb, which is going to cause an AW pending situation. Um, we're going to talk about this one kind of specifically and hopefully the gateway that you're using is going to support a feature called silent post that should eliminate cases like this but okay we're going to talk about that here in a bit okay the the final cause here of creating these pending payments is if they don't complete it in a timely manner so there is kind of a, a hidden timeout on aceweb and you can set this in your aceweb i and i i think it defaults to about 30 minutes but if they authorize their payment or even not authorize their payment and 30 minutes goes by or whatever your timeout is set to, ASWEB is going to throw that out. It's going to be like, you know what, this has gone too long. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to accept any posts from the payment gateway for this session ID after this period of time. So again, this is one of those ways where you could end up with those pending records. Okay, so at this point, we're going to jump to the ASWEB INI setting that controls how much cleanup is done for those pending records. So again, it's determining what happens to the registration and the payment when ACEWeb never receives that response from your gateway. Um, we're going to talk more in depth about each of these and kind of what this means uh, real world, but just kind of a quick at a glance, it's four settings, there's four options. Zero is basically disabled. Um, it's not going to do any cleanup at all. It's If you have an AW pending registration, or I'm sorry, an AW pending payment with option zero, it's not going to touch the registration. The payment's still going to be active. For option one, your registration is going to be left just how it is with AW pending in the reg note, but the payment is going to be voided for this one. For option two, it's going to cancel the registration and also void the payment. Now for option three, this is where the kind of aggressive cleanup really starts to kick in. And it varies based on if you're on Fox Pro or SQL, but it's going to delete the registration and then it's going to void and delete the payment. Now for SQL, because things can't be marked for deletion like in Fox Pro, we have a flag called revoked. It's the RG revoked flag on the registration. So for void pending payments three, 
the registration is going to be marked as revoked and the payment would be voided and revoked. Okay, so that's a lot to take in. Let's look at what that actually means. So for option zero, again, this is, ACEWEB's not really doing anything. This is kind of worst case scenario. If you've got a credit card payment gateway and you have your void pending payment set to zero, you're going to have a, a, a lot of extra work to do. What this means is the registration is going to be included in the enrollment count, so they're going to be taking up a seat in the class. If the user realizes that something went wrong and uh, they want to go, oh, I actually need to go back and pay for that. Something didn't work right. They can't go back on ACEWEB and try and add the course because, again, they have an active registration in that class. It'll say they're already in that course. And because the payment is also valid, they can't go to their history and pay it via the pay balances online option. So really, if you have void pending payment set to zero and your student wants to try and correct this themselves, it's not going to work. They're going to have to call the office and you're going to have to manually take care of this. Option one, this is where the registration is still left, left alone, but it's going to void the payment. So what this means, the registration is still going to take up that seat. It's going to tick down the enrollment count, um, which would also prevent the user from adding that course to their cart. So they wouldn't be able to try and add the course and pay again, but they can go to their registration history and click the payment status button and then actually pay for that registration, making it a good valid registration and payment at that point. This is where it kind of allows the student to uh, correct some of this on their own. Option two, this is where your registration is canceled and the payment record is voided. So at this point now, it's not ticking down your enrollment count. They don't have an actual valid registration in the class, so they could come back and go on ACEWEB, pick the class again, and go through that payment process. Now, the only way they can do that is if a staff member and student manager has not gone into that registration and manually attempted to fix something. So um, if they call the office and then you're in their registration and helping them over the phone, then that's going to prevent them from recycling that registration themselves on ACEWEB. And then finally is option three. This is the most aggressive cleanup for the AW pendings where it is deleting the registration and it's voiding and deleting the payment. Uh, this is the, the kind of the catch-all. It's going to allow the student to try everything over again and not require basically any input from you. Now, this is the one you have to be careful with if your payment gateway doesn't support that silent post option. What that basically means is your payment gateway would take any successful credit card authorization and automatically post that good authorization to the database without the user having to click here to return to the site or anything like that. If it's a good authorization, that gets automatically sent the instant that it's authorized back to the registration and payment and those records are updated. So if your payment gateway supports silent post and you don't want to have to bother with AWB excuse me, AW pendings at all, then option three is the way to go. But again, you've got to make sure that you've got everything configured uh, based on the gateway settings that your gateway supports. Yeah, just, just pointing out the danger with option three, without a silent post, if it's one of those where the user has to click the button, remember to click the button and return to return back to, to AceWeb, uh, they could be in a situation where they've paid, it's charged their credit card, but if they forget to click that, it's never going to get undeleted back on the ACE website. So now you're in a situation where you've got their money, but they're not in the course. And that's why Correct. it's a little, you know, you're you're running a risk there of kind of the worst case scenario. So right. that's that's that, but it the is. But as Jason will point out, the silent post is going to help mitigate against that. Definitely, yeah. Definitely worst case scenario is option three without the necessary settings to prevent any any of that, uh, what do they call it, uh, money money theft? You're taking their money and not giving them the class. We want to avoid that. So, Okay, so if you're using some of the options like zero, hopefully not zero, or one or two, then you may be in the situation where you actually have to start looking for these AW pending payments. So 
let's talk about some ways that we can search for these. In your pay preferences is an option that says show AW pendings on startup. Now this is a user specific preference. So if you wanted to have just one staff member that's responsible for doing this, um, you can set that just for that one staff member and they'll be the only ones that get that pop up. So the way it works is when you log in, the system is going to check for any AW pending payments and gives you the option to double click on their name and bring up their name record and at that point, you can go into the registration and check out what the scenario is. If you need to follow up with them, call them, see if they attempted to register again. Um, <clears throat> you know, I can think of just so many scenarios where not having your payment gateway configured properly and your void pending payments set up to the appropriate level is really where all this extra work comes in, where you're having to determine what happened, why it happened, why did they create another name record? Oh, it was because they couldn't you know, actually go in and pay, so they just decided to start everything from scratch. We wanna completely avoid those situations, so um, we're gonna talk more about that here in just a minute, but for finding AW pending payments when you log in, just uh, check that preference. Now, if you are on Fox Pro, there is the, go back a slide here. There is the include void in AW pendings, so you want to check that if you're using one or two. Okay, so if you're using Visual Fox Pro and you have void pending payments set to that really aggressive option three, then it's not going to find records that are marked for deletion with this check on startup option. For that, you're going to want to use the pay grabber. So how do we use pay grabber to find AW pending payments? Well, step one is to smash that F7 key to bring up this beautiful chartreuse window. And then you're gonna check the find payments flagged as AW pending checkbox. And again, if you're using void pending payments of three and you're on Fox Pro, you need to check the include deleted payments. And because SQL doesn't have a mark for deletion, once you delete something in SQL, it's, it's gone forever. There's no, uh, there's no mark for deletion option. So we have that RG revoked flag, which is kind of the same way as it's keeping it around, but not actually deleted. So for using PayGrabber to find those, if you're on Fox Pro and using void pending payments three, check the payments flagged as deleted or include deleted payments. And then for SQL, uh, payments flagged as RG revoked. So when you do that and you hit OK, it's going to return a list of the AW pending payments that match that criteria. Now, if you're using void pending payments option number two and you put in all of your options, you click OK and you get your list, you can double click on the name record and then click edit registration to go and view the registration and payment to try and determine whatever happened. Now, as far as void pending payments option three, when you um, hit okay out of that screen, it's going to bring up a list of which ones you want to unrevoke. Um, and again, this is for SQL. So what this is saying is I've checked through these and these were all bogus. They made a mistake. They didn't mean to go to the payment gateway. So I wanna just clean this up and get rid of it. That is essentially what the tool is asking you at this point when you close out, it's saying, uh, which ones do you wanna unrevoke or basically get rid of forever? So you check whichever ones, you hit done, and then those are gone for good. Yes, 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 and then you click done. So once they are undeleted or unrevoked, you can look up the registration from the normal method um, go to their name lookup, click edit registration, and do whatever you need to do, to do at that point. If you're gonna manually process the credit card authorization and enter in the authorization number, um, that is the, the first step that you're gonna to have to do. So just to be so, clear, if you undelete or unrevoke, they're back as- They're normal, normal registration full, and payments. Full, yes. full I think I have that, that flip block there, but yeah, undeleting and unrevoking is making bringing life to them again uh, leaving them as, as uh, deleted on fox pro they'll be cleaned up when you do a pack and re-index <clears throat> for sql um, 
this is what I was thinking of here. So when you close out of that pay grabber tool, it's going to pop up this dialog that says, uh, which records would you like to unrevoke? So would you like to automatically delete the remaining revoked payments? So once you unrevoke the ones that are good or that you're manually correcting, um, it's going to say, okay, what do we do with the rest of these? And at that point, as long as you've checked through all of them, then you can say yes here, and then they will be gone for good. On the Fox Pro version, um, again, they're marked for deletion, so you don't really have to do anything. The next time someone packs and re-indexes, then those are going to be permanently removed. All right, so Void Pending Payments option three uh, on SQL, you can look up and unrevoke an in revoke an individual registration or payment. You basically just go to the name record, click on edit registration. Once you click the payments button, it's gonna say, this registration is marked as AW revoked. What do you wanna do with this record? You can either unmark it, you can delete it, or you can just leave it alone for the time being. Okay, so what happens if You've gone through those options, you've tried the pay grabber, you've done the show on startup, but your credit card batch still does not match up with your cash box report, and there's a discrepancy somewhere. You basically can't find wherever this AW pending payment is. So some questions to ask would be, um, if you're on Fox Pro, did someone run a pack and re-index? Did they, they clean those out? This is one of the reasons you'll want to coordinate with you know whoever is in charge of doing AW pendings and whoever is in charge of packing and reindexing your database. Make sure you know they're not doing the pack before you do the checks for AW pendings. Um, that's why it's a good idea to do those at the you know end of the day, your checks at the start of the day. And then again, flip side for SQL, has someone deleted the revoked registrations? When you're getting that question, is saying what do you want to do with this record? If you delete it, then yeah, you're not gonna it's not gonna show up on any uh, searches for the AW pending payments. Another reason might be that um, you have a valid charge on your payment gateway batch, but nothing that's matching up in student manager, but maybe your amounts match, but you just can't find the payment. One of the most common reasons is they didn't change the name on the ACE website before leaving to go to the payment gateway. And so, for example, before you leave to go to the payment service, you have the information or the card information that says what's the name on the card and the billing address and all that. If they're not intending to pay with that information and they go to the payment gateway, then that could cause some discrepancies. Some payment gateways don't allow you to change the card information um, depending on what, how that's set up. It may not have the option on the form to be able to change the payer. So um, one thing that you can do is, in cases like that, search for the payer name. So again, if, you're, um, if your credit card batch includes that name information, you can bring up the pay grabber and search for the payer name. Some of them don't include name information. So at that point, you could look for like authorization numbers or, or something like that. Pay grabber is pretty versatile. It has a lot of different fields that you can search on. Um, if you're not sure what field your payment gateway matches up to in student manager, whether it's like a session ID or um, a ticket number or something like that, get with your tech and we can look at some examples and tell you which ones match up to what so that you can find these pretty easily. So again, if they don't change that name before they leave the ACE website, then it could create that discrepancy and say, you know, ACE web's gonna toss it out and say, hey, this session doesn't match up with the information that was sent. I'm getting different stuff back, so it's, it's going to throw it out. So we've talked about ways that we can find them and what to do when you can't find them. What are some of the ways that we can reduce some of these AW pending payments? So again, we've already, we've already stated that once control is handed over to the payment service, ACEWeb is in that listening mode. It's waiting for a response. And so the options that we have are pretty limited. And that's just the nature of how this works because we need, you know, we need a record for that payment to sit on and that payment is the placeholder for the authorization info. Um, but if we never hear that, then you're gonna be stuck with these AWA pendings. The stuff we're gonna talk about right now is mostly payment gateway related stuff. We don't have access to your payment gateway. We can't log in and change settings for you. Um, this is something that, you know, 
has a direct line to your financial institution and so it's kind of a gray area um, we can offer you advice and tell you what to look for and things but we we can't really walk you through um, this actual process or do it for you so some of the things that we can do review your payment service page options we talked about that cancel button um, we talked about or we didn't talk about adding messages but this is a key thing. Make sure that there is some sort of a notification on the payment page that says, hey, you have to click this return to ACE web button or finish enrollment button um, or your registration is not going to be valid. If you have lots of problems with those valid payments but them not returning to ACE web, you got to see about getting some verbiage on that page that says here's the steps you need to do to finish this. So again, the cancel button is a must have. If your gateway supports it, um, one of the most common AW pending scenarios that I've encountered is when people just accidentally go to the gateway site and they didn't mean to. Um, if there's no cancel button there, then they're going to try and hit back and that's just not going to work. If your timeout is set a little too aggressively, um, this can be a problem. I mean, 30 minutes should be plenty for people to be able to find their credit card, get everything entered in and send that information back. But um, if you're getting a lot of pending payments and you're not really sure why, definitely check and make sure this setting hasn't been modified. And then last but not least, do they offer a silent post option? If your payment gateway supports silent post, you absolutely should be using this 100%. So what is silent post really? Services like TouchNet and official payments don't need silent post because when you authorize the card, it automatically takes you back to ASWEB. There isn't a button that you have to click that says return me to my merchant or anything like that. So it's not really a silent post, but it's doing the same thing. It's taking you back to the ACE website to post that authorization data when they successfully authorize their card. For other services, they may have to click that button to return to the merchant site or return to ASWEB. If there's a silent post option, definitely enable it with these because once people see that card successfully charged or your authorization was successful, they may close their browser. They may get up and walk away and think that they're done. What the silent post is doing is as soon as that authorization is successful, behind the scenes, it's sending a post to ACEweb saying, hey, this was good. Uh, here is the authorization number. Let's go ahead and finish up the uh, registration and payment. Let's remove the AW pending status and everything's hunky dory. The gateways that support this that we are sure about are authorized.net, CashNet, CyberSource, PayFlow Link. Um, there may be others, and some gateways call them different things. It may it, May, may not be called silent post on your actual gateway site. So again, if you're not sure, get with your tech and we can we can look, look up their verbiage and, and try and determine if that is eligible for that. So again, we, the payment service can only send the response to ACEweb if they leave their browser open on the payment service site. So I guess this is kind of a rare scenario. If they um, authorize their payment and then immediately close their browser, it's possible that they wouldn't have enough time to send that authorization back, but this should be pretty few and far between for instances like that. All right, to recap, get with your technician, have them do a payment gateway audit, make sure that your um, ACEweb INI settings match up to what your payment gateway supports. If we determine that you're using a gateway that doesn't support silent post and you don't want to have a super aggressive AW pending cleanup, then talk about the options for searching for those so that you can easily check for them and not miss out on any of that revenue because someone got frustrated and couldn't finish the registration and couldn't come back and pay for it later. We definitely want to avoid any situations like that. So that, folks, is AW Pendings in a nutshell, and I hope this answers all your questions. If not, now is the time to ask them. Um, okay, well, uh, why don't you go back to the pending settings. The, now that you, everybody's kind of heard the, uh, the whole scenario, go back to the pending settings and, and review those one more time, because I think, uh, and again, for participants here, uh, yeah, here we, I think that's, 
I think you went past it. Oh, there they are. Well, Voidy, void is pending payments. Uh, yep. Isn't that what okay. I think? Yeah. Yeah. Void um, pending payments. Did you have and, a question, Chuck? Well, I think the question, you know, the, the, the dilemma for every customer is, well, which one's the best one for me? And and do you have some uh, scenarios or here's a situation where you might recommend this, this or this? Um, I, you know, I think it kind of depends on how aggressive you, uh, the school wants to be with avoiding a false registration where it's AW pending and the payment didn't go through or the mm -hmm. person bailed versus of uh, airing on the case right. where a student gets a real registration, the payment goes through, but because there was a pending problem with the response, they miss an opportunity to stay in the class and they're mad because uh, they missed the last seat in the class. Got you. Okay. So I'm, yeah, I'm going to, to jump up through. on my, my soapbox here and say uh, that I would estimate that a good 90% of you are using a payment gateway that either supports silent post or does not need to support silent post, like TouchNet or official payments. If your gateway supports silent post and it's not configured correctly and you're using anything but void pending payments option number three, then like I said earlier, you're just creating headaches for yourself. If your gateway supports silent post, any good charges on credit cards are automatically posted back to the student manager database. So you're not going to have any scenarios where they got their card charged, but for whatever reason, it didn't get back to AceWeb, and now it's stuck in limbo. You've got their money, um, depending on you know which void pending payment setting you have, they may or may not be able to correct that themselves. You're creating more work for your office staff if you're having to look these up. The bottom line is, if your payment gateway is one of the ones that I listed and it supports silent post, make sure that that is turned on and working and then set void pending payments to option three. It does all of the cleanup for you. No reason to keep uh, illegitimate pending payments if the user just left and went to the payment gateway site um, on accident. So that's that's kind of my two cents. But to recap again, option zero really not a good place to be. This is the the one where the student's not going to be able to do any cleanup themselves and this really is going to put a lot of stress on your staff because they have to check every single time someone leaves to go to that gateway site and they don't authorize that card successfully and click the button to return to the site, assuming it doesn't have an automatic um, option that does that or a silent post, then you're just you're creating more work for yourself. Option one, it's a little bit better, but really um, you know, options one and two to me are just band-aids. I don't think we have any payment gateways out there that really rely on this um, to have the student be doing the actual cleanup. So again, I, I can't say it enough. Get with your tech, say, hey, this is my payment gateway. Does it support silent post? Um, can we test if it does or not? You know, you can make a, a $1 test course and create that in Student Manager. Go to your test course on AceLab. You don't have to publish it. You know, put in your, your click to leave to the payment gateway. Authorize the card, but don't click the button to return to AceWeb. You just close your browser. If you go back into Student Manager at that point and you've got a good registration and payment that has the authorization info on it, Silent Post is working. All your troubles are over and you don't have to worry about doing any, any kind of cleanup. At that point, you should, you should set your void pending payments to three so that it's doing all the cleanup for you. However, if your test fails, then something is definitely not right. And if you're on void pending payments of three, then you need to set that back down to one or two until you get that configured correctly or determine if it's something that's supported. Um, uh, Stein, you have a you, you have any thoughts on that? Do you want to offer a, a soapbox or any thoughts? Um, there's a couple of scenarios I'd like to toss out, but that I'll let you uh, pontificate if you want. Well, just In one little uh, caveat there uh, with a even with a with a good silent post or or an automatic return type uh, payment service where we recommend option three. 
Jason did throw out that one weird option where the, maybe the power went out just at the wrong time or there was a big network glitch just at the wrong time and the payment you know, went through, but before we could get that automatic request back, something happened. So there's a very rare chance that you could still result in that case where you've got a deleted record uh, registration at this end, but you actually did accept the user's money and um, you know, and, and so it's uh, it, it does behoove you to kind of check before you do your pack to see if there were any pending deleted pending registrations in there, and maybe try to follow up on those. Uh, probably nobody's going to run into that, but it is just that rare possibility. So we don't want to. I don't I want you to say, hey, well, uh, Jason guaranteed this wouldn't happen. Well, no, it you know, could possibly. Let me, let me add a, a, counter, uh, a counter argument. If your gateway is set up and it supports silent post and you've tested it and it works and you've got void pending payments set to three, I really don't think you need to be doing a daily check of all AW pending payments because you may still have AW pending payments. They're going to be the ones where the person left your ACE website, went to the gateway by mistake, and you know bailed out that's that's going to create a pending uh scenario that isn't something that you should really be spending a lot of time yeah. trying to fix what i would recommend is that you just batch your credit card uh, amounts against your cash box amounts if everything adds up you can have 50 aw pending payments and really there isn't there isn't anything that you would have to investigate if there is a discrepancy at that point yes then Okay, I need to find out here's the amount that we're off, um, what payments are AW pending that match that amount. Let's check with this and see what happened. But again, as Stein said, it's going to be really rare to have a gateway that supports either silent post or the automatic return and not have good payments get posted back to the database. Um, but like, yeah, and, and Jason's, Jason's right. The reconciling your, your accounts is a, is a better way to try to catch those those possible rare instances. So yeah, ignore what I said about, about checking because you're right, you could have, you know, just the, the actual pending payments that never went through and um, and uh, and they never got registered. So that's right. that's how it's all supposed to work. But- yeah, uh, Avoid pending payments of three. Well, the idea is that they can be safely ignored at that point. Yeah, yeah. All right, we've got a couple questions that are new that I will want to get, but let me just offer a, a, a marketing contrarian, and let me clarify, Jason, for option two and option three, uh, re uh, registrations and option two are showing in the class as canceled. They're not deleting the registration, right? Option two. Correct. Right. Option three, is that also they're canceled but not deleted, or are they actually deleted? They're, the they're deleted. Yeah. They, they are deleted. The okay. registration and the payment. Right. And again, so the option two scenario, if you're a marketing fiend, would be you say, well, okay, maybe I want to find out if somebody at least was stumbled or, or was looking for a class and they got there and then they canceled, I might want to call them and find out, well, Joe, did you, uh, is there an issue with the fees on the class? We can, I, I guess what I'm saying is with the option two, it doesn't occupy a seat in the class for like limited enrollment classes, but option two does allow a staff member to go in and chase down a person who had a pending registration and maybe do some personal follow-up. Uh, so again, um, uh, that is something that uh, you can try. I mean, that's something that might be a reason why you might want to look at option number two um, if they wanted to do that. So, but but again, uh, it just kind of depends on how you see your students behaving and, um, uh, like I said, your 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 model. But I, I think that's good. Um, new questions. Number one, uh, Karen asks, why do some AEW pending payments show up on the deposit listing report and some do not? And that I'm is not most likely because 
depending on your, your void pending payment setting, um, if they're marked for deletion, they're not going to be showing. Actually, Karen Rankin? No, this is Karen at is UNL. Karen? I don't so remember how the setting is there. I don't know if they're on SQL or not, but if they're on Fox no, Pro. No, they're on, they're on Fox Pro. They're on Fox Pro. So if they're using option two, you said a deposit report? In the yeah, I think cash box is what I'm guessing. Um, I'm guessing what that is, Karen. I, that's so, one actually. And it would be a avoided payment at that point. So if they're not checking voids in that cash box, then they wouldn't show up at that point. Yeah, I, so Karen, we'll need to follow up with you on that and and check your check your settings on that. Um, New question that I, you should be able to answer: Is it possible? And this is Emma again, our local uh, guru here. Is it possible for a student to receive a confirmation email even if a payment is a if you on an a pending um, payment situation? At I would be time, should it not be no. Yeah, there's there's no email that's sent out for. Um, when there's no payment for those made. situations, because again, it, ASWEB can't differentiate between an accidental click to the payment gateway and you know a catastrophe that happened and they tried to pay but they couldn't. It doesn't know the difference, so it, it's not going to send anything out until it gets a response. Okay. Okay. So again, the answer, Emma, I would say, I would. It sounds like is that probably not. Uh, there shouldn't really be a typical scenario where uh, you're going to be. Uh, you'll be seeing on that. So, uh, folks, any other questions uh, on the payment? Uh, Jason, that was that was very good. Um, I believe uh, Melanie Erickson is anxiously waiting to see if she can win another prize for South Dakota here. So, Sharon, I'm going to let you wrap it up and coast into tomorrow. So, Okay, then. So, since this was brought up, I'll announce the winner of the coffee break that is going to Grand Valley's Leslie. So Leslie, watch oh, for an oh, email. I'm so yeah, sorry, yeah. Melanie, that this didn't come your come your way. <laughs> Melanie's C she's Leslie Melanie says yay excited. and Melanie and Melanie's, Melanie's just not Leslie responding excited, at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But tomorrow's final and closing session will be offered by Chuck. And he's going to discuss the trends we've seen in continuing education since March. Um, we'll talk about the questions we've been asked as you pivoted day to day to this new work environment and different course delivery method. He'll show some tips with course setup and discuss some current and planned integrations that we have. And I know he's going to want you to join in on that discussion and share what you're doing and ask the questions that you might have. So join us tomorrow at 10.30 Central Time, and we'll, we'll wrap up this week of virtual conference. Jason, Stein, thanks for joining in today. And everybody, have a good evening. Oh, okay, Melanie's got, she's going to choose a different beverage now since she didn't win her coffee. So we hope to see you all tomorrow morning. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> uh, right, everybody.